I haven't made any videos about Ahsoka. The Ahsoka series is out. But I have been seeing a ton of people flock to my old videos that I've made about Ahsoka or Dave Filoni when I said that Dave Filoni wants, he's, he's meticulously turning Star Wars into Star Wars, the Ahsoka ton of story. That's been his goal from the beginning. And it's so fun to see people finally start, the light bulbs are finally starting to come on. Some people can't quite all the way go there yet. I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, think like, Man, what happened to Dave Filoni? He was actually, he was really good, you know, when he was working like under George Lucas or under, you know, John Favreau. But but now, now Kathleen Kennedy got to him. That's, you know, Kathleen Kennedy is the boogeyman behind every, you know, fandom menaces curtain, shower curtain or whatever. Stop it. Dave Filoni has always been lockstep with Kathleen Kennedy's philosophy. He put out that whole, there was the video that surfaced of his talk. This was long before The Mandalorian was even a thing, long before, you know, he, I don't know if Disney had bought Star Wars just yet, maybe they hadn't yet, but he did this talk to this group, and he was talking about how we need more women, women in Star Wars, you know, and, and Leia was great, I mean, Leia, because, you know, Darth Vader, he was scared of Leia, and that's why, you know, at the opening of, of uh, Star Wars, you know, episode four there, you know, he's kind of scared of her. So he just takes her away and has her, you know, because because she's a great character. We need more characters like that. We need, you know, female characters. He was lockstep with this stuff. And I did videos about it. And what did the Filoni zombie say? Uh, he had to say that because he has to play the game right now. You know, he has to kind of play the game with Kathleen Kennedy so he can kind of still get work. It, it is laughable how deluded these people are. They just want to, they, they will buy into any delusion as long as they can keep watching Disney content and hold on to the little hope that the Civil War will, will come around and they'll win and Star Wars will become like they want it. Who even wants Star Wars anymore? Like, look at the garbage that Disney has spun Star Wars into. There's no retconning the sequels, guys. Remember when people said that, thought that, oh, Favreau and Filoni, their, their big plan is to do that. Please, come on. I, I, think, I think only really simpletons still believe that. All of the silly things that people have believed just so they can cling desperately to this and try to still believe that, you know, they can watch this stuff and it'll get better. And I, so I wanted to reiterate just a few of the things that I've said in those videos to make it current because the Ahsoka series is proving every single thing I said. They are taking, this is what he's always done from the clone, from his Clone Wars series. He will cherry pick everything that he thinks is a good idea from the EU, completely bastardize it and put it in his continuity and plug Ahsoka into the main character of all of that crap. They even, you know, oh, the heir to the empire. They're throwing around words from the Thrawn trilogy and she's going after Thrawn. She's, he, he's, he would love, and he might even be planning to do this with his film that they're, they're going to give him, which I hope that gets pulled the plug on or ends up being a, a Disney plus series or something instead. But he's planning fully. Don't, don't even deny it. He's planning fully to make the Thrawn trilogy with Ahsoka Tano as the main character. Maybe Luke will float in here or there, you know, but no, Ahsoka's got to be the main one. Ahsoka's the chosen one, guys. That's just a given. In, in the Filoni, Star Wars, Ahsoka Tano is it. She deserves to be a part of every era. She will never die. She is crucial. She Everything hinges on Ahsoka the White, Ahsoka the Wise. And she's a crap character. I never understood people that like, well, you know, she used to be a good. No, she was always a crappy character. The idea of her was interesting and decent at one point. But get that little brat out of there. Kill her off. You know, Star Wars, Clone Wars was way more interesting without her. It's a part of it. Uh, the episodes where she wasn't around were actually pretty interesting. She was just a, a, a problem from the get-go. Again, the idea of her wasn't. The idea of Anakin having a Padawan was quite interesting. But he can't maintain, he can't have such a relationship with his Padawan. She can't keep surviving so far into his continuity. Because then, which what they're trying to do, they're trying to make Anakin's fall all about Ahsoka when it has nothing to do with Ahsoka. Anakin's fall was about Padme. That was it. Stop it. Yeah, because people think, well, at least she's not like Rey. She's not like Rey, guys, so it's okay. You know, Ahsoka's our hero. She's not like Rey. Rey's a Mary Sue, but Ahsoka's not not a Mary Sue. Like, they can't even say it with a straight face anymore. Ahsoka is 100% a Mary Sue. 100% a Mary Sue. Dave Filoni only knows how to write two types of female characters the Mary Sue and the matriarch. Those are the only types of female characters he knows how to write. And quite often, if you give him enough time, even with a matriarch character, she'll blend into a Mary Sue character. Hera, for example, 
in the context of the team of rebels and whatnot was more the matriarch character, the wise mother-like character, but he'll only keep a matriarch character around if he's got a Mary Sue character to, to fulfill all of his waifu fantasies with. And the matriarch character is just there to flesh things out. As soon as he starts focusing on the matriarch character, she becomes the Mary Sue character. I remember uh, one, in, one person <laughs> in, in particular, but people just lost their minds when I was pointing out how Sabine Wren was absolutely a Mary Sue. Straight up, like, how can you even pretend that she's not a Mary Sue? How can you say that? Oh, they just lost their mind. And, and now look at it. She's hip awesome artist. She's a badass Mandalorian. She designs the logo for Rebels. She gets the dark saber. She's got force powers now, too, because she's awesome and can do anything and everything. And buddy her up with, with Filoni's wife, who Ahsoka. And I mean, it's just, how can you stomach? How can you watch the Ahsoka series and not just want to throw up every 10 minutes? I, I don't understand this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you people are so delusional. And they're finally starting to realize it. And it's really hum uh, humorous. And it's really entertaining to see the ways they're trying to justify that they weren't wrong before. We weren't wrong before. There was a civil war. It was, they just lost. And um, Filoni was good because he had people working over him. But now now Kathleen Kennedy sunk her teeth into him. And uh, there's there's just no talking to people. There's no there's no helping certain people who just want to believe that, you know, the moon is green cheese and and how dare you suggest anything other than that they will justify it all no the moon really is green cheese it has to be guys it's ridiculous oh and lister for 9.99 i remember remember my favorite episode in clone wars where when it focused the clone trooper character or what was when it, your, your favorite character your episodes or was when it focused on the clone trooper characters okay also when yoda shows up it's always a treat to me plus the droids were hilarious yeah there was great stuff in the series and people say see feloni no feloni Look at the stuff that Filoni wrote. He's an executive producer of that series. So he's going to be listed as a writer sometimes in a group of writers. But if you've ever written with other writers or you you know looked at you know group projects like that, you know that sometimes the person who just throws out an idea on the table gets listed as a writer. And the real work, as you know, of writing is actually crafting and, and creating a story and character development and pacing and tension and all of this. Filoni's awful at that. The the, uh, the Siege of Mandalore, that was the first thing that I know of that he was listed as the sole writer on. And, and it you can tell. You can tell. That story is garbage from beginning to end. Uh, none of the characters even act like the same characters. I mean, what is Ahsoka's even, what, what platform does she even have to stand on? She just shows up out of blue, out, out of the blue, out of nowhere, in the middle of like, you know, we're at the cusp of freaking Order 66. The Chancellor has been kidnapped. And she throws a little hissy fit because they're not going to drop all that they're doing and help her with the Mandalore thing. You know, you're playing politics. No worse trying to save lives, you brat. I'm sorry that you just think everything should be the way you want it. I mean, and, and but, this, but the show rewarded her. That's what Filoni does. Here you go, Ahsoka, whatever you want. You're the bestest. No consequences for you. Everything you want. You're the wonderful hinge pin, linchpin of, uh, of Star Wars. It's such garbage. It's such, oh, I hate her character so much. You know, I did the whole video uh, referencing, it was it was a springboard off somebody else's video. I can't remember the channel's name right now, but it was a good video that they had done that I, I referenced in my video talking about how when Dave Filoni was, you know, put in charge of Clone Wars under George Lucas and whatnot, they actually had somebody from the EU come along and he was the keeper of the Holocron, I think was his title. He was the one to check against EU stuff to make sure continuity wasn't going to be messed up or whatever. And Filoni just couldn't care less. You know, as he's famously said, I can't be put in the box. I just, I can't be put in the box. I like, write whatever I want to write. You know, well, you don't belong writing a franchise like Star Wars. Go write some, you know, <laughs> dreamed up fantasy waifu character you created on your own and pretend that that's something worth the, worth the crap, you know. Oh, I can't stand that man. Cannot stand him. I just, I, you know, I don't know him personally. I have nothing against anybody personally like that, but it really bugs me people who just consistently take a dump over everything good in a cultural mythology and everything good about something and then pretend that they're, that they're awesome for doing it. You know, like the Zack Snyder's of the world, you know, that kind of thing. Filoni, for example, horrible. He does not do time jumps. This is another thing about Filoni that I've mentioned in previous videos. He doesn't know how to do character development. He doesn't. He just time jump, 
All right, now Ahsoka's older. See, she's wearing different clothes and she's not quite as bratty anymore. Although sometimes I forget that I did a time jump and I still make her a total brat, Mary Sue. But no, time jump, guys. Time jump. They're different now. Yeah, that's not how to write character development. You can't just jump forward in time and pretend that things are changed now. You know, if you're going to do a time jump as a writer, that's something that you have to lay the plans for, lay the groundwork for, and prepare an audience for, make them believe it. Time jumps are... Uh, are too, too willy-nilly in Hollywood today, and they're not done uh, properly, I don't think. Andre Hernandez is a uh, drinking game. T take a drink every time Disney steals an idea from the EU. I don't know if you'd survive that drinking game. 